Welcome to the Ozark Military Museum. My name is Leonard McCandless. I'm the president of the board of directors. We are located at Fayetteville Drake Field Airport of South 71. We are open seven days a week, closed only on Christmas, New Year's, and the 4th of July. From Sunday to Friday, hours are 11 to 4.30, 10 to 4.30 on Saturdays. I'd like to show you around today. As you enter the museum, the first thing you'll see is a rather large helicopter, a Paisaki H-21 Shawnee. Now this helicopter took us over seven years to restore. It had been out on the firing range and it just shot all to pieces. And every bullet that went through one side went on through and out the other. So we replaced probably 80% of the sheet metal, close to 100,000 rivets, and all the plexiglass, and gave it a coat of paint, restored several of the blades. The blades are honeycomb with 3 16 3 30 seconds, excuse me, plywood shells. They're very lightweight, and their damage was great, but they look good now. This was powered by a Rye 1820 radial engine, which is on display at the rear of the helicopter. It was mounted about the midways where the star is located. It had drive shafts going to both rotors. The rotors turned in opposite direction, directions and had to be synchronized because of the intermesh. This helicopter was used in the 50s and 60s, in the early part of Vietnam, but was replaced by the Chinook, which is even larger yet. And off to my right, are a couple of old McClellan cavalry saddles. And we always make the joke that that's the Army's early all-terrain vehicle. This very large tire is off the main gear of a World War II B-29 bomber. Nowadays, they would use multi-tires and it would be smaller, but in those days, they didn't have the technology to run on smaller tires, so they had one big tire in each main gear. Located right next to it is an aircraft camera. This camera is a 70 millimeter. I'm not even sure that film is available for it nowadays, but that would mount in the belly of, the, uh, of an aircraft or held, handheld in the door. And next to it is an enlarger from back in the 30s. Uh, same technique were used for the next 30 years after that, but not quite as crude. Located here are two field generators, a 10 kW generator and a 7500 kilowatt generator. Nowadays, those size generators for that kind of output would be just about one-third this size. That's just so how modern technology has improved. These were mounted in the, usually on the back of a truck or in a trailer, so they could be towed to the location and wired up to the communication bands that was usually ran by the command center. Just to be able to brag a little bit on what our volunteers have done in the restoration shop, this is a picture of the three-quarter ton truck when we got it. And this is the picture of it today. Miraculous, I think. The guys really work hard on them. Very dedicated. They won't quit till they're finished. We're looking at a two and a half ton cargo truck, troop transport. This was made by Kaiser Jeep Corporation. It was used in Desert Storm as the reason it's in the sand color. What's so unusual about it, it has a multi-fuel engine. It runs on just about anything that'll burn. Kerosene, jet fuel, diesel, perfume, or $35 a bottle scotch, if you want to put it in there. Next is a Chevy Blazer, usually used by the brass. They didn't want to ride out in a Jeep. Those are this three-quarter ton chassis, similar to the ones you've seen on the road for many years. 
Next we have a Chrysler Tug. This is a ground handling vehicle for moving aircraft from place to place without starting the engines. In our vehicle room, we have an example of the last two Jeep type vehicles made, the 151 made by Ford. After these came the Humvee. The one we're looking at right now is the early model. The only difference between it the, and the late model is the, different, is the bigger windshield in the second series and signal lights, which the first series did not have. The second series, as I said, has a larger glass in the windshield and has turn signals. Otherwise, in the paint schemes, they're the same. They're independent four-wheel drive, four-wheel independent suspension. Uh, rode much easier than the old solid axle Jeeps. The next line of vehicles are all Dodge. They date back from the gray ambulance from 1942. That's the green ambulance in uh, Korean era and the blue ambulance in the Vietnam era. They're all Dodge. They're hard to start, hard to shift, hard to steer, and hard to stop. But they last a long time. Jeeps are sort of what we know as the Jeep we see on the road. The old one made in the 40s on the right and the one in the 50s on the left. Not much changes were made in those from the ones in the 40s. This is the British Ferret armored car made by Rolls Royce. Four wheel drive, armor plated, holds two people, the driver up front and the gunner in the middle. It has grenade launching tubes on the front, can be fired from the inside. It's very well put together but it has one major drawback. It does not have an air conditioner. It gets hot in there. And if you're in this, out in the sun in a hostile environment where they're shooting at you, you had to close the windows and look through the periscopes, I'm not sure you could stand it. We're looking at a 1942 ton and a half Chevrolet truck. Now back when these were made in World War II, it was customary for the workers in the factory to hide a new penny. Well, this went through two or three different owners before we got a hold of it. But sometimes the process, the lid on the glove box broke and we had to take the glove box out of the dash and taped to the underside of the dash above the glove box was a 1942 penny, which is on the stand there by the title box. And on our right, is a bivouac display. The tent and all the headgear and sleeping bags and all were carried on a soldier's back. A soldier just had half a tent called a shelter half, so he had to get with his buddy to button the other half together to make a full pup tent out of it. In front right here we have just a common garbage can but the garbage cans were washed every day because one day they'd be a garbage can and maybe the next day they'd be cooking in them. We have a field heater. This is a kerosene heater that boils the water in the can. And usually that's for washing dishes, mess kits, and so on. Next up is an L-13. This is a very rare aircraft used in World War II for a medevac. In fact, it was the first flying ambulance. The doors on the right side both open up and you can put two litters, one above the other. I have a pilot and a medic. This was a short takeoff aircraft. It was used a little bit in Korea, but helicopters were improving then and didn't require a runway, so these were phased out. This is only about one of three left in the world. This aircraft is a Navy SNJ-5, or in the Army Air Corps was called a T-6 Texan. This was an advanced trainer after a pilot graduated from a, a twin wing biplane Stinson. There are steermen. They would work their way up to this heavier, more horsepower and with the retractable gears. 
after graduating from this plane, they usually went on to their multi-engine school or the aircraft they were going to fly for the rest of the war.